Hey what is good YouTube it's been a while I hope all of you are well and welcome back to yet another video on our channel In this video we are going to be talking about Playwright which is one of the newest entrants into the web testing and the web automation uh, web automation and browser automation world so if you are familiar with Selenium uh, Playwright is something which is close to that and it offers similar functionality so why why Playwright or what are the advantages of Playwright so uh, one of the first things is Playwright works with uh, several different languages so if you are from uh, the JavaScript world, Java world, or the .NET world, uh, you can use uh, the APIs of Playwright in any of these three languages. One of the other important features which Playwright offers, which is different, is the uh, the auto wait and the web first assertions. So what I mean by that is traditionally you have to wait. So if you are working with slow loading pages or say slow network in that case, and you want to test uh, some of the functionalities of the website, uh, then what happens is you have to wait for the page to load and then locate the elements. So uh, that is not the case with Playwright. Uh, Playwright does the auto wait for you, uh, the locators which are used to find the elements on the website. So for example, if it, what I mean by that is if, if I just click, uh, right click and click on inspect and maybe just uh, change the position of this to top bottom. And if I, if I just do this, if I just want to locate this, then we can see that uh, this resilient no leaky test is located within the H3 tag. So if the page, uh, if it, uh, if you're trying to test that whether this word resilient is present in this H3 tag or not, sometimes what happens if, is if this website loads a bit slow, then uh, the other frameworks cause or result in the test failing because it's not able to detect this. So uh, that's not the case with uh, Playwright. It has the auto wait built in, so we don't have to worry about timeouts and. Uh, setting the page weights and stuff like that thing is that it works with all the uh, all the modern browsers so if you're all the modern browsers and all the modern operating systems as well so if you want to test the uh, same code on windows mac os linux and similarly chrome uh, microsoft edge firefox and stuff like that uh, playwright works efficiently and as i mentioned it works with a few different languages so whichever languages you're comfortable with you can write the test cases using that the other important thing which this provides is or playwright provides is the code gen and we'll look at the code gen in one minute but this is another power fe uh, powerful feature which the uh, which the playwright framework or the uh, or playwright provides and yeah so those are like that's a quick walkthrough of what playwright is the website is pretty simple playwright.dev slash python if you're looking for python and i think slash java so if you're from the java world you can just do slash java or you can just come to the playwright homepage and uh, then choose whichever language you want to work with uh just a word of caution it's one of the newer entrants so it was released by microsoft in 2020 so uh, the community is active but it's not as big as the selenium uh, selenium world which has been there for since when, i think 2004 2003 something like that so the community is a little bit smaller of the uh, nicer and the newer frameworks in the web uh, web browser automation and web testing framework uh, in the web testing world which i think you should try and we'll go into a few quick demos now uh, so the setup is pretty simple uh, if I just um, I'm back at the Python API page and if I click get started it has the standard installation instructions and you can uh, we're going to look at so there's a few different use cases for playwright you can use it for web scraping anything to anything which has basically to do with the uh, browser you can do with it but we're specifically looking at uh, you know uh, testing of the testing of a web application or front ends of a web applications to be more specific using playwright and for that the instructions are to use uh, pip install uh, the pytest uh, the pytest plugin of playwright that is what we're going to do uh, i've done the setup already uh, it's pretty standard it doesn't make sense every time to show uh, the pip install steps i've done the setup already and uh, as i mentioned you know there's uh, playwright works on several different browsers so you can test the same uh, what is it test cases on chromium you can test it on firefox microsoft edge safari and stuff like that uh, so you need to install the browsers obviously and then uh, that is just playwright install now uh, there's a few different configurations as well with respect to the browsers so here i think uh, so what happens is you know um, this playwright install connects to the standard microsoft cdn to download the browsers but in most cases you know that won't be the case in your organization for security purposes there'll be internal repositories and that so in the browsers page if you just scroll to the bottom here uh, download a single browser or download from artifact repository or install from behind a firewall or proxy so just for security purposes if your organization maintains uh, different uh, the browsers or the binaries for the browsers then playwright allows you to customize those options as well uh, one of the important tool which playwright offers is the code gen and what the code gen essentially done uh, does is it, it is a short form for code generator and it essentially generates all the uh, code for locating all the elements or so whatever actions you perform on the browser then it records those actions and it gives you the code for that now so let's see that in action now 
so uh, to do that what we do is playwright uh, not coop gen but code gen and let's try google.com and it will open up the chromium browser which is the default one and it will open the recorder as well so to give it a few seconds to start up and if you see uh, it has started the chromium browser so this is not the standard uh, uh, google chrome it's the chromium uh, start the code gen this is the inspector which will start and what it will do is it will record all the actions so the first action which we did is we visited google.com now when we visited google.com first of all it's saying uh, asking us to sign uh, sign in and all so if i click no thanks or sign in based on that the code uh, will record the action so let's click no thanks because we don't want to sign in and now let's look at the uh, code inspector so if you see it has recorded that uh, action it was a button and it said no thanks which was what is already there now if i type something here uh, say uh, messy number of goals so it gives us some uh, search setting um, uh, it doesn't matter what you search for the main thing is uh, that whatever actions we did those have been recorded now you can simply copy paste this entire code yeah i'm going to stop this uh, we can just click one more link that it took us to wikipedia so all these browsers have uh, browser actions have now been recorded so if you see another uh, action has been added uh, get so we basically uh, got uh, clicked on um, basically the action which this did is it is visited to the wikipedia link page and it's generated the whole code for us and let me close this and now we can just uh, run it as it is Listen yeah this one so what headless and uh, means is that if you do headless is equal to true uh, this browser won't be uh, shown but i think uh, but if you do uh, if you do headless is equal to true uh, this browser won't uh, browser won't be shown it will do all the actions in the background but if you do headless is equal to false then the browser would show up i think uh, so what we'll do is uh, let's wait for this okay uh, let's not close the browser so we can see this action and uh, let me run the uh, code again so the code is running and the browser will open up and here so if you see it will type up the whole thing uh, messy number of goals click wikipedia and yeah so basically all the actions which we recorded uh, the code was generated and we had the code so the browser will not close now because i've you know uh, commented out that code but uh, this is how the code gen works it's very handy so if you, instead of right you know locating all these elements manually so if you're testing so if you're a tester from wikipedia and you are you know you're testing this google flow path then what you can just basically do is uh, do all the actions and uh, get the uh, what do you say uh, get the code gen to record those actions and similarly write test cases around that so uh, similarly if you uh, then uh, you know this is kind of your build up code and maybe the test which you want to perform is that if this page contains a learner message name or not or spelling is correct or not so if you're a tester if you're a tester from that uh, say wikipedia and you have to test the spellings or not spellings and all then you know you can use this build up you don't have to write all this build up uh, playwright will write everything for you and then you can just concentrate on the testing part of it so yeah the code for testing it won't write but you know to be able to locate those elements the code gen uh, the code gen is very handy uh, because we are using playwright in the context of uh, web browser automation and web testing uh, the most important thing is you need to be able to find the elements on the web page for example if you want to test the playwright website and you, if you want to see if the word locator is present or not then you need to be able to find the element now there's a couple a few different ways to find the elements uh, the most common one using the is using the xpath so if you use uh, google chrome what you can just do is inspect and uh, here we have already found the locator you can just right click and do copy and the xpath so if i just uh, what do you say i can just paste the xpath here um, where can i paste it i'll just paste it somewhere you know, for us to be able to see the xpath of this entire element uh, has been given to us by chrome uh, chrome so you can just use this and you know the element would be located if you want to write a test case you can just use the xpath and you'll be able to locate the element there's a better way of doing it and that is by using the uh, something called as the locators so there's a few different locators which are which come in built in and based on the role text uh, label placeholder alternate text uh, title or uh, stuff like that so you can use these locators to find the test uh, find the elements on the web page the advantage of this is uh, advantage of using this locators is that 
it does the auto wait so as i mentioned you know what happens in traditionally uh, selenium or other frameworks for web testing is if the if the page loads slowly then it times out uh, if you're trying to find this locators but this locate the page doesn't it uh, the page the, this page uh, takes a while to load then uh, selenium will time out and give you the error but if you try to find by you know uh, using playwright using either the locator or you know uh, using your own locator or using these custom built-in locators then what happens is it waits for the page to load and then only it completes the test so it the, the tests which you write then become more resilient locators would work for uh, no, they help you write better test cases those are more resilient and non-flaky timeouts and everything are handled so as a uh, and just as a reminder you know you have some standard locators or if you don't want to use you know use the standard locator there's something called as uh the base locator page dot locator yeah so if you don't want to use any of them what you can do is you can just use locator and uh, supply the same parameters uh, as you're supplying to these locators and that would work as well so if you want to build your own locator and you, you know uh, these built-in ones most probably these built-in ones would work but if they don't serve your use case uh, there's an always an option of uh, page dot locator so like page dot locator yeah so you can just do this and that would also help you locate the elements and as i mentioned uh, the locators work both on the css or the uh, xpath as well so it works for uh, both of them so you, you have the full flexibility if you're com comfortable working with uh, xpaths uh, because it's easy to uh, generate the xpath uh, using the chrome uh, browser so you can work with that as well or you can work with the uh, css one as well uh, now moving to the uh, core logic of this uh, how to write how do you write test cases so uh, because uh, we are working with the python one uh, and there's already a pytest plugin which is available which we have already installed as i mentioned we've already done the setup now what you can do is you can just simply copy paste this uh, simply copy paste this code and run it as it is the advantage uh, not the advantage but how it actually works is or how the testing actually works is this expect keyword so if you're from the uh, pytest world uh, if you or if you're not familiar with pytest i do have a detailed video on that as well do check that out as well what you know how pytest work how the assertion work how the assert keyword works and how it is uh, used to write the tests and all so similar to uh, the assert uh, in pytest we have something called as expect yes. Again, uh, I strongly suggest that you watch the PyTest video first and then come back here. So that gives you a better idea of uh, the naming convention of this test, uh, test and all. So basically, this opens up the playwright.dev page. So basically, this home page. Uh, let's open this in actually one of the tabs. Yeah, so this is what it does. And it expects the title to have the word playwright. Let's say. So if you see the word, uh, if you see the title actually has the word playwright in it. So that is what the test is. Expect page dot to have title uh, the playwright word so because it's a part of the larger word so they have done uh, uh, they've done a regular expression search so that's your full flexibility the trick here is the word of the uh, use of the expect keyword yeah so the expect again what it does is it wait uh, you know it loads this page and it expects this uh, title to have the word playwright within it so if it has then the test will succeed if it doesn't have then the uh, test will fail Similarly, what we're then doing is we're using the locator which we discussed by role link get started. So it's clicking get started. And once it goes to get started, then the href attribute, uh, then the get started to have the attribute href and docs.intro. So if I just click, um, if I just, what do you say? Uh, actually, uh, here. So firstly it's trying to get the role uh, by link so if i just inspect this right click and inspect yeah it should be somewhere here uh somewhere here yeah i think this is the one yeah so this is the element which is it is trying to locate so uh get by role link so this is an a tag so it's basically link with the title get started and its href should have slash docs slash intro so this is what it is trying to do so href should have slash docs slash intro yeah so this is what it is trying to test so if it has it then what it what it'll do is it will perform the click action on the browser so it will basically click this link and once it clicks the link then the url of the page should have the word intro in it which it does so this is the whole test case so it's doing three tests here i'm just going to copy paste this and try to 
run it in the browser yeah and uh, let's run it actually uh, we have to run it uh, because we are using pytest what you have to do is i'm just going to click dir and do pytest uh so it's collected the uh, test file big uh again uh just to kind of uh reiterate if you're new to pytest i strongly suggest do uh, watch that website uh, do watch that website uh, video first and what it'll give you is how to run pytest how these naming conventions of the tests and the uh, file itself work for you but here if you see uh, that you know it's collected one item and it's uh, you know the test cases have passed because we know that you know we have done everything correctly now what i'm going to do is the thing which i mentioned i'm going to ask uh, change the spelling of this get started from uh, from get started to get started and let's see uh, let's run our test cases again and let's see what happen, happens so it started the testing and now i expect uh, fully expect this test to fail because you know it won't find this get started uh, because it's changed yeah if you see uh, that the test has failed and it says that it's waiting for the uh, get by rule so it didn't find anything called as get started this test has failed now uh, the thing with this is you know we ran this uh, we ran these test cases on our local grid so what i mean by local grid is i run it on a local machine and i'm running a windows 10 os uh, using the chrome and firefox browsers and i also have microsoft edge but the thing is you know we don't know where our website would be used right uh, you know people could have the mac os some people could also have linux and they could have various different browsers so do i have to install everything uh, that you know i have to have a mac machine as well i have to get my developers or testers i have to get my uh, a linux machine and you know uh, all different sort of browsers and test on each and every one of them uh, ideally no that is not how it works that's just a lot of cost which is there and a lot of machines to maintain as well imagine a developer sitting with a mac uh, macbook a uh, windows laptop and another with a linux machine and that's not feasible so a solution to that is use, you know, running these test cases on a cloud grid. Solution for that is running these test cases on a cloud playwright grid. So what, my, what I mean by cloud playwright grid is uh, that use someone else's infrastructure to run these codes. And thankfully we have one such provider and you know, firstly we would like to thank, uh, thank them for providing that platform to use uh, free of cost. And the platform is called as Lambda Test. So what Lambda Test is, we'll just see that in one minute. I'm going to uh, quickly log into the uh, Lambda Test website. I'm going to the homepage of the Lambda Test platform, as it says, cross browser testing. So, several different browsers, several different operating systems are available to test. This is, an, uh, I also have a lot of resources, blogs, documentation, webinars, everything. Uh, one of the most important points while, while considering any platform is the documentation. So, it is pretty up to date. Uh, you can just uh, check out their uh, website and we'll now move over to the dashboard. There, uh, said in the description, you can check them out. But this is the whole uh, you know dashboard of the uh, Lambda Test website. So what it allows us to do is instead of testing it on our own machine where we don't we only have Windows, you can use their infrastructure, leverage their infrastructure. In it. Uh, leverage their infrastructure and write uh, run the test cases on the, uh, their infra which they provide now you know you can have real-time testing of the browsers so if you want to test say any of the websites in real time you can do that as well you just enter the website and you can start the test and whichever browser or whichever you know if you want to test it on a browser if you want to test it on mobile or you know stuff like that if you want to test it on android if you want to test it on apple and so a lot of configurations are already available for real-time test uh, real-time browser testing as well so if you want to test it on certain particular uh, particular device that is available as well and if you are um, one of the things which is trending is now analytics so for example if you run hundreds of test cases and if you want to see how many tests have passed how many tests have failed and some other kind of um, data points around your test cases they have a very nice dashboard as well so and this dashboard is also fully customizable there are a lot of widgets which are available so if you see these are uh, some of the test uh, you know, ratios of how many tests have passed how many tests have completed field and stuff like that so uh, you know the ui is also very nice uh, different charts are available and you can look at them and you can add your own custom widgets as well so this is an added bonus but, uh, the thing which you are more interested is uh, this part uh, if you go to the if you go to automation and builds so these are one of my previous test cases which i had run and uh, let's look at something which has say i think uh, I, I ran a few test cases which have passed so uh, let's yeah this one yeah so this is the test cases which i successfully ran and whatever actions which i did uh, they have all been recorded uh, the network logs are also present uh, and 
uh, the other console logs would also be present so for this particular test cases uh, none of them exist but this is the whole uh, test uh, what do you say uh, the whole test which was executed each and every step is present you have the videos for that as well the screenshots as well for that and uh, whatever configurations which we did to run these test cases uh, so we'll look at this configuration in a minute but you know if i i can just play back this video here as well and it will show me the entire uh, kind of test case which i ran so it's just the sample test case which we saw i think uh, i didn't do any customizations to it so if you see it has title matched it has the name of the test which you wrote the test id uh, the associated build which browser you ran on and everything is very nicely presented on this website you can also uh, do some edits and uh, stuff like that but yeah this is a very handy kind of way to do it the other important thing or the other very good feature which i found on this is this create so they have a lot of integrations actually if i uh, just click if i just go back to the home page there's a lot a lot of different integrations so you know if you're working in an organization you don't only have you know one particular so you don't only one on or uh, work on one tool there are several different tools which are available and they have integrations with a lot many of them so if you're using github if you're using jira if you're using slack or any other tool you know they most probably have an integration with them so uh, if you see there are so many integrations which are available with cicd tools they are available with uh, issue tracking tools change management tools and stuff like that so any of the modern ones which you name uh, so if you are team city is available i think uh, github is available bit bucket gitlab everything which is there in the modern cicd or devops pipeline you know, they have an support for that so what i can also do is i can just uh, create an issue from here so if i want to you know say this test has passed but you know maybe say, uh, so uh, a successful test isn't a good example for this but maybe uh, let's take a failed test yeah this one yeah so this test failed for some reason if you see title did not match it probably uh, failed because i wanted it to feel like it you know i wanted to show a field test so if i, I can just cl uh, click create issue and so i've already uh, created uh, what do you say uh, i've already connected my github to it and i can choose which uh, folder i want uh, the test case to go into so i'll just choose test repo and uh, label it as a bug and say title did not match in test build and i can provide some sample description and i can assign because i'm the only one in that so i can just assign it so it will create the issue for us directly in git so bug has been marked successfully and if i go to my github something plus test repo and issues yeah so if you see uh, the issue which we created right now and that's already showing up in the jira uh, not jira uh, sorry for mentioning jira but it's uh, the github issues and everything which was there yeah so um, basically all the details from here uh, they are already pre-populated the test id the session id the test url so if i just click here uh, it will take me back to the uh, test case which i ran or which has uh, which uh, this issue is reported against so this is a very handy uh, way of doing this as well yeah. so now to make the test cases work on the uh, cloud uh, which is provided by lambda test you have to make a few different configurations so firstly we have to initialize a connection to their uh, connection to the infrastructure and to initialize the connection you need a, a username and password or the access key so yeah uh, that can be generated from the profile page and we have to we have to initialize this dictionary um, so what it, what it basically has the name of the browser uh, which version uh, the platform which we want to run the test case on so we're going to do windows 10 and we're going to do mac os as well in a while the name of the build so what you can do is uh, sample youtube build the username the password uh, so these are the configurations then uh, so as i showed you uh, in maybe so these are the tabs right so there's a network tab there's a logs tab there's a video there's a screenshot so this is entirely configurable from here if you want the network if you want the video if you want the visual tunnel and tunnel name are uh, so if you run if the website is still not live and you are testing it on a local infrastructure then you need to uh, set up a tunnel uh, what a tunnel basically does is it uh, accesses or gives a connection between your local machine and uh, you know uh, your local infrastructure and the uh, lambda test infrastructure it's about setting up of these capabilities and the test then remains the same so if you if you want to open the playwright website then i think uh, we don't need this timeout uh, just put it some testing 
open the playwright uh, print the title uh, again we don't read this yeah so i think yeah we'll start with the context manager so we uh, introduce the sync playwright uh, again just to uh, this username key i've read it from uh, the env file which i've already uh, saved separately i'm not going to show the uh, obviously the username and access key but yeah uh, that's there then what we do is we initialize the websocket uh, connection to the lambda test uh, lambda test uh, infrastructure here in this part so we need basically this infrastructure uh, this entire configuration of the setting and using that setting we initialize the connection to the uh, lambda test uh, uh, playwright grid or the cloud grid so after that what we do is the uh, just what we did before we open the page and we expect the page to have the word uh, playwright in it okay so if uh, you know it has the playwright word in it then the title would be match our test case would be set as successful to set uh, it as successful we use another uh, another uh, playwright concept called as evaluate so what evaluate does is it allows you uh, allows you to perform some uh, javascript actions so what we're going to do is on the lambda test page we're going to set the actions and uh, status as whatever we are going to pass from here so if the test passes we're going to say passed and title matched if uh, it doesn't failed and title did not match so uh, the uh, now if we run this test case uh, test playwright website and if i go to the lambda test uh, what do you say uh, website uh, then i think it will automatically start refreshing so if you see uh, you know the connection is established and it's already trying to run a test case and again we get a, a running view of this so the test case is already running and it will already show you the running logs of the test right uh, so one of the tests has now passed and i have to run it a couple of times as i mentioned my network isn't the greatest sometimes it's very flaky so if you see uh, it has recorded the entire video of what we did you can uh, play back the entire video almost and so if you see uh, we did the title check and so stuff like that so screenshots are also available you can download and view it and also you can do individual playbacks as well so if you want to just play back this step you can just play back that as well so that's also a very nice feature similarly if you want to change uh, say maybe if you want to test on mac os the name of the mac os i think it's big sir or something i'm not a mac user so yeah i think yeah this one mac os big sir so what we easily do is replace this uh i'm called windows test so instead of this it is mac os um, big sur test big sur test yeah i'm going to run it one more time yeah so this one is passed on mac os as well so if you see here uh, the os has changed and the logo is also changed which is very nice it's very thoughtful but yeah that the logo has changed and it's run the test case now on the mac os so and the name of the test has also changed if you see it's a mac it's a mac browser so that is also very handy so you can uh, you, know, you can choose to run the test cases on the variety of uh, what do you say infrastructure you don't have to buy your uh, go and set up your own infrastructure now what you can do is uh, so to make the test fail uh, what you can do is uh, i'm going to purposely uh, change the title which you're going to look from uh, look for from playwright to sample and i'm going to run this test case now and we'll allow it to fail so if you see the icon has changed from windows to mac os and whichever version we are going to run it and all that is also shown so it's very handy this dashboard is very handy and we can also do analytics so once it is failed i think we'll allow one test to fail and then we'll go to the analytics part so it also shows how many tests we are running uh, so i have five parallel sessions which are available so uh, it's very handy to kind of test so many so i can run it uh, run a few different tests as well and yeah so now our test has failed and why it has failed is because the title did not match if you see the title did not match so whatever error message which we passed here uh, that has come through is correct that is it for this video guys this was an introduction to playwright in python and how it can help you write better test cases uh, for your website or front end and again uh, about uh, lambda test which is a cloud grid provider so the thing about these uh, cloud providers is that you don't have to use uh, you know own a whole different set of infrastructure they allow you to leverage their infrastructure to run your test cases on several different configurations several different operating systems several different browser versions mobile devices and stuff like that so uh, do check out the lambda test platform as well i'll leave a link to that in the description and if you like the 
and if you like the video you did find the content useful uh, do not forget to subscribe to the channel if you haven't already done so and share the video with your friends and family as well so thanks for watching